So what have you been up to in the past week? I have had had a lot of issues with a um, with a um, um, a party of mine. A party. Mm -hmm. Issues with a party. A D and D party, yes. Planning or uh, uh um a oh, one that oh, I'm in. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, I. <laughs> I sort of didn't figure it out. I thought you were like partying at a party. God, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Well, I. Do you want to talk about it? Or? I can. I'll talk about it in like the first five minutes. Send so none of them motherfuckers watch this shit. Um, slide so start. <laughs> okay. I essentially. It is, like, essentially what is happening is, um, like, hold up, I gotta get everything started, everything's not loading. What why? There it is. Okay, it's now loading, thank god. Nice. How's everyone been? Everyone's, I'm okay. Yeah. I could be better. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it just, they do kind of overall annoy me though. I'm ex. I, this is a thing. It's not everyone. It's two people. But the two people in the group, that everyone adores, is the is the one that annoys me. So case in point. Um, I have three more minutes left. Case in point. Um, the group. Essentially, they're, they're, they, you've played with Bregan Avira before. <laughs> yep. They have, and it's understandable because they don't know me as a care, as a person, so they don't know if these words are truthful or not, but also kind of weird. Um, they are annoyed with how Bregan Avira is but have not said anything to me as a player of how annoying Regan Avira is to them. Well, then that's stupid. Exactly. And one of them people, one of the people, had, they've both, the two of them have, exp have been excluding me from every single encounter possible. And what? like, what? by excluding what? me, yep, by excluding me, I mean like, if I, my character asks, hey, what is this supposed to what 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 why is this the way it is or what information do you guys know they don't say anything to her they ignore her completely one girl literally threw herself out of a fucking cart to to not ask regan avira not answer regan avira's question and regan avira said i guess they want to leave let's continue on and they were all like guys you, can, you can't you can't do that regan avira you can't say that well wait for them <laughs> Bro, left a fucking cart for because you asked a question. It's just, no, that's just, just that's that's the textbook definition of bullying, like that. <laughs> True, no. And then, no, they didn't push Reganavira out the cart. They um, <laughs> they they threw themselves out of a cart, like literally threw themselves out of a cart to not answer her question. And when I explained how stupid, how I'm like, I'm sitting here like, you guys are completely excluding my character and are not giving her the benefit of the doubt. They then were like, well, you know, um, they sent me this. They sent I, you something? Okay. Look at my, look at no my, I sent them to, I sent to the DM, hey, I, what the, okay. yep. I sent to the DM, I still have 24 um, seconds left on the clock. I sent to the DM, hey, I don't like how I'm feeling. I like talk to them over voice call, like, hey, I feel like I'm not, I feel like there, there's something off and I feel like they don't like something about how I'm playing my character. I would like to know what, why. And they say that I talk over them all the time. Well, you guys don't give her any answers, so she doesn't feel like you deserve to talk. And it's like, okay. And then the DM was like, I talked to them about this and all that whatnot. And they sent, they sent all of this shit to me on 
Monday night. And I had to wake up on Tuesday morning to that shit. So, from what I'm reading so far, not far, it's the DM's fault? No. And I'm not going to say that it is the DM's fault, because it's mostly their fault. And I'm going to explain why. You see that first section that, that, that she says? Yeah. I mean, I say, I'm sorry, that they said? So That's a lie. Huh? As a blatant lie. Okay. Yeah. Because it's not the DM's fault. And yeah, lying. Okay, that's well. the blat the first part that that they said is a blatant lie, and I know for a fact it's a blatant lie, and I'm and I will stop um after this uh after this after I say this and I'll continue on, but I know that's a blatant lie because I talked with the DM and the reason why they said that the reason why he did it. I'm, I'll be here, but I'm in an event. Okay, that's fine, Rosa. Um, they said that. And the DM told me, oh no, I was going to cancel session because they were trying to talk, use me as a middleman during the campaign. And I was like, oh, so they just lied to me. Okay. What they're trying to do, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make my character, who is a lawful evil, be a part of, fit the mold of what, um, a, of a, um, hold up a second. They're trying to make my character fit the mold of the good person in the group. And I'm sitting here like, Regan Avira is good in her own way. You've seen how she is. You don't need her to always make the best decisions. Like, she had to argue yesterday, and they missed it, about some guy trying to sacrifice another man for them. And, I, and Re instead of Regan Avira's like, no, let's just release them into the wild and we can deal with them later. We can do a Dragon Age style. So, I don't know. I don't know. What did they say about that? We, it was a joke, obviously, but it was just like, uh, either way, it was still interesting. But that's what they sent to me, and you can see that I was extremely annoyed by that by that stance. But anyways, hi everybody. I'm uh, going to be. I'm trying to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and give them like a little bit of more time to join us. But this is a significantly this is a significantly less amount than last time. Yeah, you, you know, college classes. It's summertime. Maybe people are busy. That's what it I is. I have finished my comic that I've been writing. However, Ooh. that also means that I have to do a transcription of it because the file, because apparently the format which I wrote it in originally isn't good enough. So, well, isn't Aww. good enough for a artist to work with. So I've been transcripting that got until friday to do it but that also means that i missed out on you know world building because i was finishing my comic no 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 you're good you're good, you're good. but it's not good enough for the hardest holy shit i know i mean if you guys I'm don't if you guys cannot do it today i can just make like a vod and then post it on wednesdays no i'll like, uh, the thing is, I can catch up once I'm finished with this, and I also know my own world-building tips and that sort of thing, so mm -hmm. I, it can work. I can do that. Hold on, I'm just going to close my door real fast. Speaking of VOD, where's the VOD of uh, last session, of last lesson? Yeah, Regina, where's the VOD? Uh, the VOD of last session is on Twitch right now. I haven't gotten a chance to upload it to YouTube. Okay. Because I have been tired. And yeah, all good, all since good. this shit, uh, since this entire thing happened, I've been not been in the best headspace whatsoever. Understandable. <sighs> yeah. 
I'll explain more about it after session because I I, I do want to explain it a bit because it does irk me and yeah. I do want opinions I only about caught, it. Yeah, I only caught like the last half of it, but I don't know what went on. Um, read the thing I sent in No Mike channel. The pic the, organization yeah, no, of the society or the picture. Look at the picture. Read the picture, and that will give you a context on what the uh, the thing is. And I'm giving everyone about like five or so more minutes to come in, so we can just talk about it for a little bit. And not talk about it too much because I don't want By the so way, this is, one of, this is one of your players that is talking to you. No, no, oh, this is fellow players. Player yeah, player. one of my fellow players. Yeah. Yeah, player to player. Yeah. Player to player. <laughs> I'm reading it right now. It's, it's just funny to me. I'm so sorry. What? A game that you were playing before or this is the game i'm currently playing in right now yeah and you just joined in or have you been playing with these guys for quite some time i don't know, like about like two months or so but that's it okay so you've been playing with them for a few time for a few sessions yeah a couple sessions yeah about 10 or so sessions yeah so essentially what i'm reading is this care this player is role-playing his character to be against uh, forms of uh, against forms of uh, discouragement verbal verbal blah, 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 blah. Discour yes is discouraged at verbal discouragement and abuse and that sort of thing and he's asking you out of character to calm it down yes okay and something that i'm seeing is that he's been trying to talk to the, that he, they've been talking to the dm about it and being like hey I'm not having a fun time anymore. So the DM is basically telling them to shut the fuck up. And is that what I'm understanding? Yes and no. There's more context. And I want to explain that context after session. But I will explain a, a lot more after. Because it is a very... This situation has been happening for the past three weeks. And I... It, the, it, the final straw happened this like two sessions yeah, ago because it it sounds very toxic right now yes very much so it sounds very toxic in the dm's form is the person in the screenshot the same person who jumped out of the cart to avoid answering a question no that was their uh. friend the person who did do that sent me i didn't know i was excluding you i feel so bad this person had balls <laughs> this person um had oh. some level of balls to try to talk to me and and, and in in entailed and in and because of it uh had just the stupidest essay of all time <sighs> by the way just to give you context spartan this is in the context yeah. of the character i'm playing as is reganavira yes and i play and i play, played with reganavira once before or mm -hmm. is that or is that in the bells and hells as well yes Okay, so I played with her a few yes. times now. <laughs> yes. Both. Yeah. Uh, you have you have DM'd Reganavira, and you have also played with Reganavira. Yep. No, I haven't. D oh, Noki has. Yes. Yes. Noki has played with and DM'd. And I with. love the idea, though. Vera was an interesting. Of what? Character. Of what, Noki? Of your character. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I like her. Yeah, and I like her, and I like I like Brzee's, I like how Brzee is uh, interacting with her in mm -hmm. Bell's Hell sessions. Yeah, like I, I, the entire point of her character, I don't want to get too. Okay, I can't get too deep. Yeah, you don't want to get too. But I'll explain yeah, after yeah, session. Yeah. I'll explain after this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. we are fourteen minutes in. Sorry, guys, for the first fourteen minutes. <laughs> um, just a lot of shit wow, has been happening like in my in my life. Yeah, a lot of shit has been happening in my life this week. Yeah. Well, Sorry. Uh, so, I, I apologize for pushing this a little bit further along uh, than it already was, but what, I mean, what exactly is is going on? Um, like, 
you probably already explained a bunch of it, but like, I'm could I'm a little confused right now. Oh, um, that this is something from my personal life, but I don't mind sharing it because it's my D and D life, and usually shit that I do with D and D. I like sharing my experiences so that other people can understand the experiences that I go through and experiences in general that are there. And I, I, this is it. This is what was happening. That's something that happened. And I, I will explain more after session if you want to know, but I want to kind of move on to um, World Building Wednesdays. If everybody can look on stream or look in, um, or and look in the uh, chat, you can see some things. This week we're learning about urbanization of society. I kind of want to change that a little bit. And we're kind of learning about urbanization and other aspects of, we're learning about urbanization and other aspects of uh, culture as a whole today. Hmm. Because I, I, I did some thinking over the week along with my shit that was going on. And I realized that urbanization is a good thing to learn about, but it should not be the focal point of lesson of the lesson of this week, of this part of the culture. Because, and I think I even have a slide here. I can go. I think it's this one. As a cultural, for culture overview, we're not just talking about, you know, urbanization. As you can see on this little list, on this list right here, Urbanization is one section of something huge. We, in culture, you talk about race, ethnicity, gender, sex, sexuality, uh, the elderly, aging, relationships, marriage, family, like religion, education, government and politics and works and economics, health and medicine and population and urbanization and the environment that surrounds all of this that is in its entirety culture. So it's not just urbanization and then we can just jump off to everything else. We're gonna use urbanization as like a sort of backbone of about sort of piggybacking off of last week's um information and then move into the overview. Does that make sense to everyone? I think so. Okay, so I'll go back. So we're all building Wednesdays. Now, just to make another, um, just to give you guys another recap, this is the map that we will be using. We'll be using the lands of Ex Exemplaris. It is a lovely little thing I, I, that I'm, again, work, I'm working on this world along with the rest of you guys, and we are going from there. The world is nothing but mountains and... Excuse <sighs> me. Mountains, plains, sands, biome, and, uh, and one volcano in the corner. And I remember someone saying, every world should have a volcano, and I do believe that it's true. <laughs> So if you don't have a volcano in your world, add one. But yes. Now, the reading. Uh, I'm going to assume that none of you guys did the reading last week. I was busy writing a comic, so yes, sorry. No, you're good. Come on, just be honest. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So, don't worry about it. I had some trouble reading as well because of school, and I'm also doing summer classes. I have two summer classes this semester, and I'm gonna be down to one for the rest of the semester, but for the majority of this class, of the 12 weeks that we have, eight of those weeks are going to be dedicated to me doing schoolwork, and in the last four, which will be talking about magic and technology, that one I will have a lot more time dedicated towards those, so we will be going in depth, in depth, in depth, about those things as well we're going in depth about everything but in particular the last two weeks are going to be the ones that you guys are going to get my full and undivided attention on the topics just to wanted to point that out just in case you see that i don't if i say like oh i didn't read this reading or i did read the reading but i have i forgot to put like a, a proper recap that's why so for the recap of the um thing by the way if you look right here we are using the cobalt Wor guide to world building again We'll be using the same book all throughout the entire class, and we are going to be looking on page um, 54 at the reading. Now, on um, page 54's reading, which is like about, I forgot the exact name of it, I think, but something on the lines of like something societies in, um, in your world or something on the lines of that, they kind of talk about three topics, where you start, the details and your differences, and playing the what ifs. So to start off, where to start, um, the first 
section, I copied this straight from the book, is the easiest part to begin with the Shakespeare Society is looking at its realities and its result from its physical forms. And it says about the physical differences between males and females is a prime place to start. And it goes deeper into how like gender and how like the life stages are a big part of that part as well. And I even sort of mentioned that in the beginning when I was talking about the overview of what culture is, we mentioned how aging and the elderly is a big part of your culture. Like how in, now you gotta take this again with a grain of salt because it's just coming off the top of my head. Like how in Asia, they value their elderly more. They respect their elderly a lot more than it does in Western cultures, at least in each, I'm sorry, Eastern cultures, a, mix, a lot of Eastern cultures respect their elders a lot more than Western cultures. If that makes any sense. It does. Okay. Now, an, an example of culture, which is something that I'm going to be stealing myself because I love it. Um, I always love the magicians and the um, like the secret societies, and it kind of gives you an exp explanation of how like there's like a hidden valley of of like of us like a sisterhood that like has children and they see if there's children. Um, can um, become like magic, have mag mag magical energy and so on and so forth. And that was one of the really good um, examples that I just wanted to put in here because I thought that it was like a really good explanation of how you can make a little subculture inside your world. Also, I don't think that I even mentioned this in last week, but culture and subculture are two different things. Cause I do remember that some of you guys did ask when it re was related to language, if different cultures have different languages or different races have different cultures from my perspective in D, &D it seems like culture is race-based and not regional based but you can decide whether or not those cultures are racial racially based or or cultural based or a mixture of both because it's like how in america you can have in, I'm going to use uh, Pennsylvania, for example, uh, you can have everyone in Pennsylvania have a certain culture, like, I don't know, uh, uh, eating cheesesteaks. Sure. Uh, you can have that thing of all of them like eating um, cheesesteaks and they like calling their, um, their subs up there, their, uh, their sandwiches up there, uh, hoagies. But... You can also have it where a little pocket of that area in Philadelphia is Hispanic. And that's where I grew up in this very small pocket dimension that is full of Hispanics and African-Americans and Afro-Latinas um, in, in Philadelphia. So that little subculture is as how it is, how it is, is you have the culture of Philadelphia, but you also have that subculture of people in Philadelphia that are Afro-Latina and Latina. So, yes. So, playing the what if. Challenging yourself to create sorts of societies and worlds that isn't that difficult. In the classic what if game of science fiction, there are plenty of books and websites that offer de descriptions of real and curious phenomena, which is a great starting point for these kinds of things. When you're asked, when you're giving yourself, um, when you're telling and writing in your books the ideas for your culture, you have to ask yourself the what ifs. What if this, like my question that I asked for my entire world, which may, which is going to be the foundation of its culture is what if knowledge ruled the world? That's basically the question that I asked because I'm using and revamping and changing Harry Potter's world, the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And I love Harry Potter. Don't get me wrong. It is one of my, it is my, it is a series that I grew up with. It is something that I'm always dealing with. And it's, it's just been, it has been a part of my life for a long time. But I'm aware that in the book of Harry Potter and the wizarding world itself, the world building itself is kind of bad. Um, and they also ask the question, they ask the question, the original thing that they ask is, what if wizards lived amongst us, but did, but the rest of us, but non-magical creatures did not know that wizards existed? And that's the basic question of the wizarding world. And you see how their entire culture and their, all their things come together, but they don't really have those good questions and they don't really have that question answered. 
if war if we didn't know about the wizarding world how does it say so secret over the time like they had one thing they had like a thing in fantastic beasts i believe that was like oh yeah you can like wipe away memories with like rain or something like that or some mixture potion thing of rain but they never really go deeper into that answering that question what about you guys? Do you guys have that what if question about your world that's sort of different from Forgotten Realms or even different from stuff in just our world in general? You guys can speak now. One of my things is I I think I got inspired by Elden Ring too much. I haven't even played it yet, but I decided that in the center of my map, maps sort of above, sort of like the centerpiece of the, the entire country and the city states, mm -hmm. would be a solit would be a solitary moon that moves at the same pace as the Earth, aka it just stays in the sky. I had to think, what was going to happen to the psych What's going to happen to the sun as it moves around? How is the species? How are the seasons going to change? Every night there's going to be a blood moon. Is, there, is that, that going to be significant? Is this going to affect my magic? And it's been really fun doing that. Yeah. What about you, Nookie? Because I see you in here. <laughs> um, well, my what if is basically what if we went to the future and had spaceships and stuff like that and explored different planets, but all of it got destroyed. And we're basically back at medieval times, but with ruins filled with spaceship stuff. So, are you also asking the question of what would you, what would humanoids do with future technology that they didn't know existed beforehand? Yeah, I okay. tried to work around that as much as I could. Okay. Um, and what about you, Kyle or Juniper? Whoever wants to go first. I suppose, for my world, my question is generally like, sort of set uh, set to like I guess more of a fantasy backdrop. Um, what if, um, what if, uh, hmm, how do I word this properly? Um, brain brain dumb. Sorry, hold on. You're good. Um. What if, um, what if the Aztecs became an empire the size of, like, um, that one empire that I can't remember the name of that was really big? Rome? Rome, yeah. What if the, what if the Aztecs became as big as Rome? The original Italians, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's actually a pretty good question. And I would love to see how you answer that over the course of the semester. Yeah, me too. Honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kyle, what about you? Uh, I don't think I have a pretty laid out idea of my world, just so I can answer to the what if yet. Like, I feel like I need a, a blank sheet of paper before I can start painting any idea on it. And I still don't have the blank sheet of paper. If that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. You get it's perfectly fine. I don't expect you guys to even have that concept yet, but you know, as we go across the entire thing, because I do, I actually didn't get a chance to mention this, but if you are a person that doesn't go in this linear fashion, because I know I'm not, I just am teaching in this fashion, and if you decide, like, wait a second, oh yeah, I like this part of this, I want to start here, because sometimes you don't start from. A map. You don't start from an idea for that. I'm just teaching you in a way that it makes it easier for you to see how all the parts fall into place. You do not have to do from A to Z. <sighs> Sorry about that. You do not have to do from A to Z. You can do X. Uh, you can go X to B and then back to uh, Q and then go from Q to R for some reason and then go back to T and then go to U and then go to V and then jump back to A. Like it doesn't matter in any which way how you go. It always just, just that it's here. 
And you're it's just your, at the fact that you're able to even do something with it is fine. So what about you, um, Zar? What about well, you? Well, as some might recall from the from the first class of this, um, I think it was the first class. Mm -hmm. uh, my world kind of started with a what if. What if skills and personal growth can't be something that's acquired or exchanged? It has to be something that is stolen, essentially. Absolutely. That's exactly what you said. And that. It's an interesting idea, but it has very far-reaching ramifications that I'm still kind of chewing through at the moment, trying to figure out how that shapes the world, because it does, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So do you have any current ideas of how you want to go there, or you don't want to say that just quite yet? Uh, I have bits and pieces, but nothing concrete. Okay. Makes perfect sense. All right. Then yeah, that's what that's the type of things you want to do. So the people who are watching at home or watching on Twitch right now, ask yourself the what if. Don't worry about, like, ask yourself. That should be like your first step is asking yourself, what if blank? I asked myself, what if knowledge ruled the world? And I asked myself, what if humans did not know about magic? So when it comes to, I'm going to go back here. When it comes to, for example, this area versus all down here. This is where humans live. This big old little area of um, oblique, um, ob oblaria right here is where there are only humans. And then you start going out and these two areas are where half orcs and half elves live or other half creatures. Cause I'm actually deciding that I'm going to be making other, like definitively in my world, there is going to be the possibility of having other half creatures. Like, I don't know, half elf, half orc, uh, half dwarf, half human, half tiefling, half a... human second edition creature that was half elf, half dwarf called a dwarf. <laughs> I might even look it at had that. Shit. Negative stats. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? Why is it that it's creative? That's what it is. True, but like, like but the thing is this, right? Why is it that in um D and D like standard edition Proper. there yeah. isn't like there is not that section that's there that makes any sense. There's not. There's no like off the bat like hey. Uh, you know that you can make a half creature with anything. There should be those things, but nonetheless, there aren't. Like we have plenty of fae-like creatures, like Lionel and the Loxodon and mm -hmm. Centaurs and Satars now. But at the same time, there's like, oh yeah, like we're not going to talk about anything of that sort. We're just going to introduce all these new things. Yeah, it's like no, talk about the idea that there could be a half elf, half hu half elf, half um dragonborn creature. Like, that's a thing. Yeah. Honestly, I'd like to see more instances of, like, uh, different races with infernal lineages and different races with, like, celestial lineages. Because, mm -hmm. as it stands, we only have one for both of those. Yeah. But, like, you get, like, the fae creatures, and there's a fuckload of, like, fae. Like... Exactly. Like, imagine, like, and Noki knows this because uh, Noki was my DM before. Uh, the idea of, uh, a uh, purple <laughs> dragonborn tiefling. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I want it. I want it. I mean, he's interesting. You almost did. Just oh, for the aesthetic. He's very interesting. Here. Oh, as a as a small aside for sort of a thing from my world. I don't know, like. This, this might be kind of an interesting to, thing to mention. Mm -hmm. It's something that I am very excited about for no particular reason. But I was thinking about, like, okay, so this is, like, this is the Aztecs, right? But how does magic work in this world? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it, and it's like, well, the Aztec people have their ancestral homeland, Aztlan, which technically doesn't exist, but also technically does. It's kind of considered in, like, it's, it's almost considered, like, it's a place that you return to after death. And so I was thinking about that and maybe magic could be seen as ancestral and as slightly religious in some, like a small way. Mm -hmm. um, where it's like, the idea is that magic comes from this place, this ancestral homeland, 
and it's because it, the homeland is so important and so powerful that it permeates within the reality that they have to reside in as mortals. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Do you have it written down at least? Because I know a lot of you guys say ideas and y'all never write it down. No, I have a bunch of shit written down. Okay, good. I uh, know. Back to uh, my uh, tiefling dragonborn creature. Listen, Noki knows the reason why I wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is diff- I think there should be a difference between this is this would be a really cool race, and I want to abuse racial features. No, no, no it was just a cool race. I'm sorry, Noki knows. Uh, uh, my baby, uh, my lovely child. Uh, my friend, I, I had, we had a person playing in the campaign that played as a, um, as a red dragonborn. And, no, Noki, unmute, cause you can, you're gonna, you can blast me all you want. Go ahead and unblast me. It's fine. I, I wasn't going to blast you. Yes, yes, you were. Yes, you were. Find out the red dragonborn. Yep. Is, is there is a red dragonborn in our campaign at one point. I forgot, he was like a red dragonborn fighter or barbarian, right? So red dragonborn. Uh, a paladin, thank you, paladin. There's a red dragon born in our campaign, and then, uh, where is it? I can't find the server. Yep, and I and I was a blue tea flake, and somebody came, and I was like, you know, what would be really cool. <laughs> you know, it'd be really cool. Imagine a t- imagine a tiefling dragon born. That'd just be really cool to look at. And I was like, wait a second, a tiefling with scales and a, like an actual dragon tail? <gasps> but that could yeah. also be a tiefling of um, Tiamat. Mm-hmm. Like, that'd just be cool. If you want to go that route and entirely in vanilla, then you could do a, a tiefling uh, a dragon soul sorcerer or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Dragon yeah. or whatever. Draconic so bloodline have, sorcerer. So you can have the tell and then also the skills and things like that. I did say that she was going to be I said she was gonna be a mixture of her parents. So you know a sorcerer bard that's a tiefling mm-hmm. dragonborn? <laughs> oh that oh, no. That's a lot. No, wait, we can do something with this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what what was the visual no. like? A tiefling dragonborn sorcerer of the of the of isn't it like a dragon soul sorcerer and a um <coughs> and a bard um uh whatever Nithi um was is a bard. Nithi is, is the character, and you were a lore bard. There it is. Yeah, a lore bard, dragon soul sorcerer, tiefling. Dragonborn. Oh. I could be a monster. <laughs> I mean, Timothy is still part of my world. Oh yeah, and we're I, gonna, and we're gonna, and we're gonna, and I'm gonna bring him back at some point. Yeah. He's going, he exists in this world, and he's going to be part of this world. So yes, Timothy, the half elf, the half, half elf, elf, half elf, Timothy absurd exists. ass thing. Um, he, um, oh. actually no, he is a warlock, wizard, cleric. Bard. <laughs> Cleric Bard. Did Timothy take one single yeah. class? Huh? Did Timothy take one level of each single class? Uh, of no. All magic classes. All magic classes because oh, his mom. I do want you to understand. His oh. mom is a high elf, and his mom told him, Timothy, you're not allowed to do two things. One, never mess with the Fae. They are horrible creatures, and they will ruin you for the rest of your life. And two, never deal with magic. Magic is a dangerous item that you can never control. So what did he do? He fucked the Fae to get magic. He fucked with it. He fucked around to find and found out. Yep, he fucked around and found now out. Can never ca- now he can never cast ninth level spells. Yep. He is stuck at like third level, despite being like, despite like when he comes back, he's gonna be like a level eighteen something like that, and yep. he's and he's still only gonna be able to cast fourth level spells. Yep. 
Uh, he is a he's lovely. He's great, guys. I tell you, he's amazing. Um, he was a wizard. He went to go to wizard school. He went afterwards. He was like he met a guy, oh um, a human, and he's like, wait, humans can cast magic? And he's like, yeah, bro. I went to this wizard school, and he's like, okay. Um, and he went to the wizard school. Um, he got kicked out because he burned down the ninth, the um, the he west wing. Too hard. Yeah. He no. He burned down the west wing of the college. Of the um of not the college sorry of the wizard of the uh, magical school, and then he said okay, which is a college, which is a college, and then he yeah. said you know what I'm gonna go to a bard college. I think I can do that. I'm I'm suave. I'm sexy. I can do that. Um and then, you know, uh, he became a part of a frat. He's a frat bro. Yeah. Then he's a, frat, he's a what? No. He's a frat bro. He also oh. he only learned common from frat bros. So he's like, dude, bro, and that's his entire. He's a, he's a total jock. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a he's, he's a, a total jo- he's a total stin- stick thin jock. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> yep, it's great. And then he said, okay, man, I can't really play like- any instruments, but I can play the pan flute. Oh, uh, uh, what's up? Up's up. That is the only instrument he knows how to play. Yep. <laughs> and he said, fuck yeah, it. If- if I get to play in the one shot at the end of this course, please make a mention of Timothy in the, the Helms of Example. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Also, he's also please. a druid, too. He's a druid, yeah, cleric, please. warlock, wizard. Bard. <laughs> he has 12 cantrips. He has 12 cantrips and only level 2 spells. The world and let us le- learn the legends of Timothy. The full caster. Absolutely, I will. Oh, I will be the indecisive. Yes. Yeah, he's the indecisive, because he really tried his best. He really he just tried his best. Talent. Yeah, he tried his best, and he just didn't do good. But overall, he's funny as fuck because he has like a his intelligence is high. He's very intelligent in in Elven. Just that everybody else uses common. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's he's a because he, he's a noble boy, and that's what happens. So, uh, and that's kind of it, by the way, just to kind of sum up everything. Yeah, ask your what ifs, and try to make everything happen in your world that is just what ifs. Now we're gonna go over to um, cultural overview part two. Now cultural, and today we're going to be or it's going to be discussing urbanization and the start of culture. Now, first things first, as I mentioned earlier, culture overall is multiple things. It is all of this stuff and more. Every single one of these things and more. So, we are only going to be focusing on this little bit right here. This tiny, tiny bit right here. Uh, which one? I'm still watching the stream. I don't see it yet. Urbanization. Okay. A little bit right here. And with that, what we will be doing is... Well, discussing what exactly urbanization is. Now, what is urbanization? Urbanization is the, is the development of human civilizations um, that, is, that is supported by a large number of people who live in a sparsely populated rural area. And then you go, you go, from, you go from this rural area to urban areas. So it's the transition of going from, ru- from rural setups to urban. So, one good example is this lovely thing. So we have this graph, and I got this graph off of one of the resources, documents that we have um, in this part. Now, I realize, I'm gonna cut this um, section short because the part that I wanted to talk about with a person is not here because they are doing college right now. They're taking tests still because they're in a completely different part of the world than we are. So, next session, when we talk about race, I'll begin that discussion talking about NPCs. And yes, Timothy will become an NPC of my world. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I want to punch him in the face again. Why? He's done nothing wrong! Exactly. Because he is a, cause he is that chaotic. I had him for that. Like, I did a one-shot, and I was like, hey, guys... Make a level eight, like have a level eight character. I I need to kill it. I need to uh, prove to you how how evil my and evil my BBEG is. I didn't kill a single person until the end because I, I was targeting Timothy. 
I was targeting him. And I'm like, what the fuck? That's, that's what you do, right? That's what you gotta do. He just doesn't die. <laughs> he just said die. Nope, die. You have to make the character that the DM was trying to kill everyone will particularly focus on and make sure that that character is unkillable. No, it wasn't even the fact that he was unkillable. He was just really suave. So when they were like, you, you're gonna be with us. He's like, wait, how much do you get paid? <laughs> yeah, literally that. And now he's a part of the anti matter cult that is uh, gonna be facing off against the uh, people, facing off against her other character, Marzenia, at some point in time in the future. Yep. So she's literally gonna have to fight herself. Literally. I I'm yep. looking forward to that. I'm very excited about that because my character's gonna look at him and she's gonna be like, "Wait a second, oh You're rich shit, boy, aren't ya? <laughs> You're rich." And he's gonna be like, yeah. "Yeah." One of the funniest moments of my time playing D and D is I was playing a lizard folk who was so fucking chaotic, and the DM constantly tried to kill him. And one moment I remember in particular was him getting shot in the back of the head at point blank range with a shotgun dropping to zero hit points and then immediately rolling a nat 20 on my first death save <laughs> that's did they really said you're not dying yeah but that happened several times where you just didn't die honestly yeah <laughs> but this is a to cut this is, so con, con, concentric zone model this is what is a sort of like a good explanation of what exactly um urbanization is and again i got this from the book and i got these words straight from the book it is open stacks it's a perfect thing if you want to read over um culture a lot better and in, in more depth than what um we talk about in this class i do recommend that as a book and i will put that in the resources in this um resource um in the resources tab in this document now uh in zone a you see that is the heart of the city in the central of businesses and cultural district right here this is if you think about it like this um this is where um living is going to cost the most or second most zone b is a concentric circle surrounding the city and conformed to formerly wealthy homes split into cheap apartments from new immigrant population this zone also houses small manufacturers pawn shops and other marginal businesses that is absolutely correct uh i actually lived in zone c uh, actually, yeah, I, I, I actually lived in zone C. Uh, it was very interesting when reading over these, um, with reading over the concentric zone model and remembering where I used to live and where I live now. <laughs> it's like eye opening. Uh, zone C consists of homes for the working class and establishes ethnic enclaves, enclaves. Um, this is where you're. It, where your um, the price for uh, houses are going to be the um, most inexpensive. And D is for wealthy homes, white collar workers, and shopping centers. And Zone E contains estates and upper class, in exurbs and the suburbs. So even though they live the farthest away from town, they still are more expensive because this is where rich people like to live. And, Rich. Mm -hmm. and I feel like this one is out of place, but I probably will move it up. Urbanization during the um, industrial era was a growth spurt worldwide. The development of factories brought people from rural areas into urban areas. The new technology increased the efficiency of transportation, food production, and food preservation. For example, in the mid-1670s to the early 1900s, London's population increased from 550,000 to 7 million. And, however, the modifications of hu modifications humans make on their surroundings in order to urbanize such places can impact the environment in negative ways. Pollution, disruption of water flow, deforestation, and de- and desertification. There it is. But, yeah. So, this slide kind of explains a little bit, like, how, um, because of urbanization, your population is going to be bigger. So, when I specifically mentioned last week how if you make a sort of industrial society in your area, in, in a certain part of your world, there's going to be a higher population there because usually industrial societies mean 
better technology. Better technology means that you lead to efficiency in, in transportation and efficiency in food production and food res- and food preservation. So think about those factors when you guys are making your world. How big is your town? If your town's a village, how little um how little technology does that town have? I know that for my um my world and I can talk let me see hold, hold on let me see something. Let me look at my Yep, nobody's in my campaign here so I can talk shit. Okay. In my um storybook campaign, they are going to a they are currently inside of an industrialized uh not fully industrialized, but not like um what is it? It's the one that's between industrial and agricultural. That one in between um, ag- um agricultural and industrial. Um they're at that type of place. But it's a lot more, there's a lot more people living in that area than you would think of the time period because of the things that they are dealing with. For example, Rumpelstiltskin has gold, and since they have gold, they can give more money and not starve their um, people. There are no poor people in that town, and that's surprising. It's sort of like a weird utopia. And I'm staring at the camera so that if my players do watch this, they have that piece of information. (laughs) Because sometimes... Just palm feeding it. Just like, please, please take the hint. (laughs) And that's kind of weird. But nonetheless, let's get started! Now... We're going to talk about stuff. Yeah, culture. Um, I'm not going to let you... I'm not going to talk about this one this week, but I will talk about this one. So, the next 30 minutes are going to be taken into you guys looking at four aspects. Race and language, politics and religion, magic and or technology, history or, uh, and history of the world. You are going to be looking at these four sections and write two to eight sentences about each one of the sections. And um, I, I have a question. Sure. Uh, about the concentric zone model. Yeah. So it seems that as you get further out from the uh, the center, mm-hmm. there the populations get get wealth gets wealthier. However, it's a common like trope in like media and stuff. Like I guess anime is a good example of this. It's like Oh, but the wealthy people, they live in the center of the city. They live in the the higher up, you know, they look down on all the cops. So, that kind of stuff. So this is the thing. What it's it's sort of not like that in the eccentric zone model. If you kind of look at it, the heart of the city the heart of the city is a center of business and and cultural and, and a cultural district. I'm gonna use Philadelphia as an example because it's the only example that I can really use because I even though I've lived in the place I'm currently at, I can't really say too much about it in philadelphia there was there was center city downtown of philadelphia in center city there is just that cities if you were able to live in the city those were extremely expensive to live in Mm -hmm. now there's a little section outside of the city it's a little outskirt part if you lived in that part that is lesser but still expensive. Mm. There was a second, the part that I lived in, which is in like the outer skirts, that was the most inexpensive place to live in. And it was the most expensive place to live in because even though it was right next to a bus stop, um, my mom got it in the eight. My mom got it in the early nineties. I'm sorry, late nineties, early two thousands. She got it like three to five years before I was born. So that place, even though our rent didn't really go up that much, it was still pretty low. It's like the cheapest part of living in the city of Philadelphia. Now, if you went out a little bit more into like North Philly. Uh, like again, going slower and going more and more away from 
downtown Lar- downtown uh, uh, downtown Philadelphia. That's where the rich neighborhood. North Philly was the white people area, and was richer than our area. And that's where D is, and then the suburbs, which I've never seen before. Uh, I've never once seen suburbs in Philadelphia, because we are also, along with us being a, um, an older city, we are one of the oldest cities. Uh, Philadelphia at one point was the capital of Pennsylvania, and then it changed to Harrisburg. So, yes, the most, the richest people live in, um, A. The second richest, I'm sorry, the first richest live in E. The second richest live in A. The third richest live in D. And then B and then C. So, E, A, D, B, C. Does that make more sense? Sort of. It just seems counterintuitive to how the trope usually plays out. Yeah, know, think of it the, this way. It, the, when, the royalty uh, usually is in the center of like a yeah. city. Think of it this way. Like, when you're a royalty, you want to show your wealth. Sometimes that mm-hmm. sometimes that wealth is going to be big castle and a la- big castle and lot and like a lot of servants. But other times it's going to be I own all of this land. I can do whatever the fuck I want with this land. Mm-hmm. And I can't exactly get all this land in the center of a city. I gotta go out of the city. Yeah. Because at least in... Because, yeah, because I was going to say, at least in, like, um, in my my storybook world again, the castle is in the center of the city. They have... The tavern is on the out is on the outskirts and it's somewhat in the center. So it's, a bit, it's like, in literally in, like, the C district, the C or D district of the city, where it's not too out of the outskirts, but it's also not in... Um, the richest part of the town where all the rich people are in the, in the city are, are behind the castle and then everyone else lives everywhere else and then farms. But if you want to, what you could do to help you kind of figure out how that works and if you want to use this, cause this was somewhat helpful into how you figure out how to like name your areas, you can literally just do... A circle plan. And go from there. Where you do like a sort of Venn diagram-esque thing. And then go from there. Mm. Alright. So... I'm going to give you all 30 minutes. I'm going to give you all 30 minutes and it's starting uh, reset starting now. I'm going to full screen it. And you all, and I'll, I'll, what I'll do instead is not that. I'll full screen this. And I will let you all answer these questions of writing a sort of overview of each section of your world. And I will be back because I need to go do something. So I'll see you all in a bit. All right. I'm just going to ask this for everybody else. Do you think that we...
Oh, do you think that we should like develop our creatures, develop our races as well, like right, right now, or just uh, think about the culture? I guess that depends if you're tying tying your uh, culture to your races or to your regions. Well, yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of the thing. Like, I'm also doing islands as well. Like, I got four nations on one island, but the other three nations are on separate islands, so... That also means that some of the languages are, like, extremely native in that regard. I feel like I need to... strengthen the creatures... first. Strengthen the races before I start looking at po politics and stuff. Yet at the same time, that's next week. I mean, Regina did say that we don't have to take the linear approach as she's teaching throughout the lessons. If we that's need fair. to work on races before we start working on culture we work on races first and then we work on culture so if for you races is a focal point for your culture then yeah think okay. about in broad strokes about your races and use that to develop your culture Oh, races and languages now.
Hello, how you doing? You're back. I'm drawing a blank. Okay, I am back. How's everyone doing? Oh, hanging in there. I'm working on creatures right now because I feel like I need to do that before oh, I here. talk too much. Go, go too in depth on the culture mm -hmm. and stuff. Fair enough. Remember, two to eight sentences. I only want like a little snippet of it. You only need to do like a small bit of it. Well, I already feel that out then. <laughs> Good. I'm expanding. Also, you're two to eight sentences, and I should have said this before. And I think, um, looking at this, 16 seconds, 16 minutes left. And I lost my mouse. Yay! There it is. There it is. But yeah. Um, when you get, when you're doing this, and this is around like the 15 minute mark, 15 minutes and like 42 seconds, um, when you guys are writing this, and if you guys are even almost done at some point, I highly doubt, but when you guys are writing, it doesn't have to be full sentences, it doesn't have to be a full paragraph, you can literally put bullet points. I just want you guys just to start writing something about each part, just so that you guys know about something, about each part. Yeah, some of the, some of it's I'm getting into a, getting a little closer because I'm like, okay, this species in particular, it only lives lived to be two years old, so I need that need to make sure that's written down. That's another thing too that we haven't really talked about. But what is a year? Uh, How would you? Depends on the depends on the year, I guess. Like okay. some people, some people's worlds are gonna be dependent on the matter of the how. Like a day is going to be a moon cycle, or a day is going to be, or a year is going to be how often the harvest happens. Exactly, because when you're thinking about like medieval time, especially, calendars are calendars, but calendars aren't really that important. Um, people follow these people used to follow the almanac, and the almanac was just there to tell you, hey. I think on this day, the season's going to be this. There was no real season marker. It was just like, like the people when people say that like, oh yeah, the first day of um, of summer is like June twentieth. No. That that didn't exist back then. Yeah. It was a matter of like, okay, the season is changing. Here's what we need to do. Exactly. It's getting colder. Yeah. Or like it I never have meant seen, I have seen twenty four winters. Yes, exactly. It was never once about whether or not dates mattered. Time is different than it was today. Today we live day by day because we have the luxury of living day by day. Before they lived season to season. So, time moved. I guess you can say time moved a little faster. I'm sorry, time is a little slower. Oh no, time faster, time faster. So yeah. I'm gonna go mute my. I'm gonna mute myself again so that you guys don't hear my background noise. All right.
I think I'm gonna cut it short. I'm gonna give you guys. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna cut it short now, so you guys can stop it. It's at ten minutes, so I'm gonna stop it there. Right. Any reason for that? Because I think I I don't I'm, I don't want to come off at least for people who are not here because there are a lot of people who are who signed up are not here right now. I don't want to go too far. But also next week we will be talking about race anyways, so I don't want to go too far. If that makes sense. I can see that. Yeah. So let's see what you guys got so far, even if it isn't a lot. We'll start off with Juniper. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, what specifically uh, to start with? Uh, pick your favorite part. My favorite part. It's race and language, politics and religion, magic and technology, and history of the world. Yes, I I'm actually fairly interested in the history of the world. Um, uh, obviously, as as my world kind of focuses on uh, past texts and things like that, uh, something I find particularly interesting about their view of the world is how it was created and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, so while, you know, it may or may not be true within the world, the people within it do believe it, um, that basically this world was created by the gods as a gift for the people. Um, and something they're very focused on is the fact that as a gift, they need to give and take equal parts or the gift will be taken away from them. Yeah, so they're very particular about that give and take with nature. It really affects their their culture and the way that they go about doing things. Okay. Yeah. All right. And the next person to go is Kyle. Uh, I think you can skip me because I, I drew a complete blank on this. Uh, That's very imaginative today. You're perfectly fine. Uh, Noki? Do you want the short or long version? Pick your favorite um, one. My favorite politics within the elven part of my country. Let's go. We, we have a swindler at the head of the country, which is basically like a king, but he doesn't have a lot of power, similar to the UK. And he just goes on and on and talks about stuff he thinks is true because he's incredibly old. So he has lived through periods of time that, you know, most people haven't seen. So some people believe him, but okay. most don't. But the part um, that is most important is that in the open culture, nature and magic are intertwined Makes so sense. that rules most of the stuff there. Okay. They don't really care about him, the higher ups, but they use him to repress revolts or things like that. Okay, makes perfect sense. Spartan? You want me to speak on uh, the race, languages, or what in particular about which about a specific country or just a country I find interesting? Whatever you decide. All right, so I picked my sort of central nation that is literally in the center of my uh, country named Fortuna Grab Grabriza, and essentially it, it was essentially the main city was was created directly underneath of the stationary moon they are home it, it is home to much of the knowledge and magic of this world as well as a, a sort of separation of the earth they believe that they are destined for a higher purpose and uh, do not f and want to extend their reach beyond the mortal plane plane in that sense they even created a race called the moonborn which as the uh, are born with the abilities given by the moon includes their ability of dark vision as well as innate magical abilities of such of sorts like that 
I also have an anti version of that called the Dectunas, which I'm currently writing up. These guys are descendants of the Blood Moon. And few different occurrences, few devilish styles and stuff, so yeah. Okay. Still working on it. Yeah, of course you guys are still going to work on it. This is something that I didn't want you guys to not, like, obviously, um, think that this is going to be, like, the final draft of this piece. This is something that I wanted you guys to think about, like, is in, like, this is what I think this is, go is going to be my main issue, my main part of this. So, last but not least, Zar. Hi. Right. So, I felt like a, a surge of inspiration slash motivation, but I, I kind of went tangential to the current assignment slash exercise, where I created a document and I kind of made an overview of my world that kind of covered various aspects of these. Okay. It's so, is, is that alright? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll read some of that. So, I divided it in... So thing I got was the premise, and then I have quirks of the premise, and then I have factions. So, first of all, it's not necessarily a world, but it is a region. Premise, the region has been cursed, forsaken by the gods for its sins. The gift of life, of complex motion and capability for forward progress has been taken from the population. A great barrier placed over the land, leaving it to stagnate and rot. So this is like post-apocalyptic fantasy. Okay. What is the curse? The curse is that sentient adult creatures that are no longer capable of comprehending new ideas, becoming locked in a certain point after maturity, they cannot acquire new skills, talents, or grow or develop with the exception of performing a ritual to steal those things from others. This ritual has varying effects of complexity and effectiveness, but is almost always destructive. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the premise. Quirks. Very rarely some are still some are born who still retain the gift of understanding for longer periods of their lives. Uh, the barrier around the region restricts travel in and out of the region. However, if there are a way to get outsiders inside the region, they would be highly valued since they are unaffected by the curse. Some people who become locked in form primitive tribes where knowledge is simple and passed down through these rituals. Those who do not grow enough before the curse takes effect become basically feral creatures. So those are some quirks okay. of this world. And finally, factions. Here's where politics and things get interesting. So the first faction is the City of La City of Last Hope. It's ruled by a wizard who supposedly still retains the ability to understand and grow. In truth, he uses a dark ritual involving sacrificed children to steal their temporary immunity to the curse. Even still, he acts as a beacon for the people he rules, giving them hope that one day through surviving and collecting knowledge, they will find a way to break the curse and be set free. Uh, through magic and an organized system of subordinates and relays, he disperses choice knowledge and growth back into the population. Now, that's the first faction. The second faction is the Penitents, an ultra-religious faction. They bear the curse by being ultra-rigid and dogmatic. Their belief is by ridding the region on themselves of all corruption and sin, the gods might show mercy upon them and lift the curse. Okay. So they uh, already can see a little bit of conflict between those first two factions. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Forsaken Ones. They're not exactly an organized faction, but they are still a contending force. The, ma the, the majority of the population of the region has devolved into the Forsaken Ones, feral humanoids who attack on sight and eat any creature who shows signs of sentience. So... Zombies? Sort of. More like ghouls. Okay. And then we have the feudal lords. These nobles occupy castles, fortresses, and keeps, and police the land around them. They select and curate those from the local population who have developed useful skills. Some they consume to gain their knowledge, while others they strategically place throughout their territory to enhance the effectiveness of the populations they oversee. And then we have the stalwart tribes. These people live simple and steadfast lives. They mitigate the curse by living in the moment, doing an assigned job in the tribe for the duration of their lives, and not dwelling on things above them. They are the happiest of the faction, but are the, also the least resilient. Losing one person could cripple an entire tribe, leaving them to de deteriorate into becoming forsaken. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is what I have written so far. Just getting whatever thoughts I had onto paper. It's good. Yeah. 
I'm enjoying your world. Yeah, yeah I'm excited for your world. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm very excited. Not only just interesting. I would love to be able to play in it and just ex and ex explore what type of explore with the different characters that uh, you have uh, created already. And oh, you told us you were you weren't sure if you could do it, and you did it. <laughs> you had such doubts. I had low confidence. Very, and I appreciate that you are that you that you were able to come out of that sense of low confidence in yourself and try. I do appreciate you immensely for that. But yeah, those were really good things. Even if some of you guys didn't have ideas, it's fine. 20 minutes is not a long time. 30 minutes is not even a long time. A whole hour, if I asked you after an hour to do it for me, you wouldn't do it the same either. It's perfectly fine. Oh. And even if the viewer, if you couldn't do it in that 20 minute span, I wouldn't expect you as well to either do it in that 20 minute span either. That's just enough time where, hey, you can throw out ideas, barf the ideas out. You can have a full flush idea of all your worlds. I already have mine. They're already in my noggin. They're in my head. And I don't really like writing out my stuff. That's why you see that if I do edit things, I do it because it's for you guys, not for myself. Yeah, I like to do that as well. Yeah. I've run into those problems. So of like, as soon <clears throat> in my Saturday session, essentially what is written down is canon. Mm -hmm. Something I can't change, which is why I don't really write that much. Exactly. I will write. I will write like characters and that sort of thing because I'm like, okay, these guys are gonna have to, th these guys are gonna have to meet to this person again. But other than that, it's like, yeah, nah, just winging it as it goes. If something happens, something is gonna happen, and if I have, and if I feel like it should be canon, I'll write it down. Makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, Insert logo. Insert logo. Insert. But yeah, we finally got into the end of this session today. How do you guys feel about culture as an overall statement? I feel like it's hard to tackle because there are so many different influences absolutely and that's exactly the reason why for the rest of the class we are going to be tackling that top this topic it isn't just going to be a oh look we're going to talk about this once and one and done no we are talking about this topic for the entire like we only did this is our we're on week three we're on lesson three week four we haven't even like tackled this at all. We're going on to week five, and we're only we're only then talking about races. <laughs> so next week we will be talking about races. And do you guys have any extra comments, questions, or concerns before we go before we um, end today's session? It was short, but it was a good it was a good introduction um, resolution yeah, so to it all. Today's lesson was about the urban urbanization about the mm -hmm. land and living conditions and that sort of thing mm -hmm. that was it that was it that was what this lesson was today yes okay i just wanted to confirm that before i went off too hard mm -hmm. okay. can you use some some of the things up uh, what i missed um Um, some of the things that you missed, which is everything, no offense, but you guys didn't Not really, you didn't, again. no, you didn't really miss much. We kind of just discussed a little bit about, um, about urbanization mm -hmm. as a whole, because, you know, urbanization is a big part of, um, is one of the mo multiple parts of culture that we will not be talking about in the class whatsoever so i wanted to take the time in the overall culture section to discuss urbanization and sort of discuss the sort of 
and have this be a like, sort of jumping point onto the rest of the class. So the rest of the class, we are breaking it down into four parts. And as I said already, the four parts of culture that we are going to be dealing with only are... Sorry, give me a second. I need to find it again. Are race and language, politics and religion, magic and, te and or technology, and history of the world. Those are the only four parts of this class that we will be talking about. In this class, we will talk about when it comes to culture. And that enough, that enough information, that is enough information to make sure that you all understand and have a fully working world for D&D. Because &D. Mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff is already tackled in there. Like, for example, if I talk to you guys about religion, um, yeah, religion is a big part, but also, that's kind of already done for you in D&D, &D because you can literally just say, well, any religion that you guys want to do, and I really actually want to try to make a Muslim tiefling. Mm -hmm. I think that would be fun. I really think that would be really awesome for me to make in the well, future. Yeah, the Muslims do indeed have uh, demonic, uh, like, demons in part of their culture. Yeah. A lot of part of their religion, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would really love to see if I can actually make a, like, a cult, a, um, like a, like a, a cleric and I would have to talk more about it but that that, that follows a lot and praises a lot so that would be an interesting take on it as well so like that's the type of stuff that we, that we kind of talked about today but that well does end it sorry Rosie I did have a little bit of content to talk about today in today's session so I'm very sorry that you missed that. Well, I was in the um, live. It was just that I had to mute the live when my mom constantly was calling me. No, you're good. I'm not. Bl I'm not. Gonna, I'm not trying to blame you or anything. I'm sorry if I came off that way. I'm not blaming no, you whatsoever. No, it, it didn't. It didn't. Trust okay. me. It didn't. Good. Trust me. I know a kindness any tone where I when I hear it. Good. Thank you. So yes. Um, that is where our session will end today. It was nice having a session today with everyone today. And yeah. next week we will be talking about, f like, we will be getting into, um, the aspects of race, which is going to be the best race in language, which is going to be the best part yet, because we are going to be making on stream three are we going to be using are we going to be using the home the homebrew section of D&D Beyond or what how are we doing? Um we are going to be using if you all looked in your uh into the uh, Excel spreadsheet that I made and you look under race and language there are two sections that we're going to be talking about one race 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 section language of races and language language name depiction of language how how does it function and how many people speak it and last but not least the new races section and that's where we're going to be in for example as you can already guys can see i will be ha making a sun elf in my row mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they will be in the plant and be in the sand biomes makes sense yeah because i don't i like the idea of high elves i just don't want fully high elves to be the only uppity people i feel like if mm -hmm. you are a creature that was born from a like a um like a sun like a sun flare yeah. at, the, at the dawn of time and that's what and that's how you were born i think that would be pretty cool wasn't there also moon elves yes there is yes there are because like okay if there's moon oh there gotta be a sun yeah exactly but yes that today, my friends, is where we will end session today. I keep saying session. End class today. <laughs> I'm so used to saying session. But yes, that is the end of the stream. I will show you what I was working on in my event I was attending. Forgot it was on the same day. Alright. And What's up, the boy? this. That looks cute. He cute, but he'll bite your head off. And that's how we that's end session. That's the cutest so. thing of them all. <laughs> I'm gonna stop like streaming there. <laughs>